I had this teacher in college. He wore these really cool glasses. They had like a dark rim around them. He had cool hair. He wore really like hipster clothes and just a cool guy. You know, you would look at him and you would say, oh, this guy is cool. He had a really pretty girlfriend, which we would see sometimes in his office. And uh, yeah, he was just Mr. Cool, Mr. Cool. He used to be a club DJ. He worked at all kinds of cool companies before being a professor. And we thought he was the coolest guy in the world. And then one day in class, he said something that completely blew me away. And this certainly didn't ruin his coolness. No, no, in fact, I think it added to it because this completely shook me. I, I did not expect this to come out of his mouth. He basically said that school is not everyone's number one priority. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because for me, at the time, mathematics and school in general, not just math, but school in general, was my main priority. I was determined to get good grades in every single class, no matter what, at the cost of relationships, at the cost of my health. It didn't matter. I had to get a good grade. And I thought that everyone in school was like me. I thought everyone thought like me. I thought everyone had that attitude. I thought everyone always wanted to be the best. I thought everyone always wanted to get a 100% on every test. Looking back, I realize how naive I was. People have different priorities in life. Just like my teacher explained, some people you know, prioritize their family. Maybe they have kids. Some people are religious. Some people have jobs that really matter to them. Everyone has different priorities. And that's basically what he explained to us. And I was just blown away. And it's funny that I was so blown away by such a simple statement, which is common sense. I look back today, I think, wow, you know, 25 year old me uh, was not uh, what I am today. I definitely don't think the same. And that happens to us, you know, the older you get, your, your thinking patterns change. Hopefully they change, they change for the better. But there was some truth in my thinking back then. Because I think it's worth trying to get a 100% every time. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why it's worth it. And then I'm going to tell you how you can try to do it. The steps that you can follow in order to actually get a 100% on every test. Because there are things that you can do that will lead you towards that path. I took so many math classes in college that I feel like I became a professional test taker. I became really good at taking tests. Not necessarily really good at learning mathematics or really good at learning concepts because I always had a very hard time learning the why about mathematics, learning the concepts. I was very good at memorization. I was very good at structure. I was very good at writing proofs, but I had a hard time coming up with the proofs, understanding the reasons. That took me longer. Some people are very good at understanding the why and they have a hard time with the structure. So let's talk about why I think you should try to get 100%. It's a pretty simple answer. If you go in there with a the mindset, say you're taking uh, a college algebra class, taking college algebra, this is an old book by Rosenbach, Whitman, Meserve, and Whitman. And you want to get 100 on every test. If you try to get a 100%, if you genuinely put in the effort that is needed to rock your exam, worst case scenario, you'll probably get a low A, a B. Maybe if something goes horribly wrong and you have a terrible teacher and just life strikes you down and you get sick or something, you might get a C, but you're probably not gonna fail. If you try to be number one in your class, you're probably not gonna fail. And that's what I did. I tried to be the best in every single class. I was extremely competitive, extremely competitive. When I got to grad school, my mentality changed. I realized that being the best was, I don't know, a little bit, <laughs> 
a little bit too hard maybe. And so I felt like I did my best. I still tried to be the best, but I was average. I was right in the middle in grad school. I wasn't the worst. I wasn't the best. I was somewhere in the middle. So if you try to get a 100% worst case scenario, you're still going to do pretty well. So how can you actually get a 100% on every test? It's actually pretty easy. The steps are easy. Doing them is another thing. So if you're in a regular class where you actually go to class face-to-face, -to -face, online would work too, but let's just talk about face-to-face. -face. You go in, you write everything down. I, I know there's a lot of people out there that are visual learners and they like to sit and listen, but at some point, at some point you're going to get to a class where you're going to listen and you're not going to understand. I know that I maybe understood 60 to 70% of what was taught in a single classroom, in a single lecture, maybe 60%. That's how lost I was in every single math class. So I would write everything down. So write everything down. Worship your notes. Go over everything from your notes. Make sure that you can repeat or regurgitate, if you want to use that word, everything from your notes and understand everything in your notes. Understand it fully and completely. Rewrite your notes, put them in a nice folder, have fun with it. The notes are everything. The notes are the time that your teacher has to convey that information to you that matters, right? The teacher only has maybe 75 minutes or 50 minutes or two hours per lecture. Every minute matters and a good teacher knows that. A good teacher will make every effort to convey every piece of information that he or she can to you in that time. So those notes matter more than anything. They're more important than the books. I love old math books, but the notes are more important than the book. In fact, I took many classes where we had the book, but it was all about the notes, especially in grad school. It's all about the notes. The second thing you wanna do is obviously do all of the homework. So finish it all. And then you want to be able to redo all of the homework without looking at your notes. Essentially, what you want to be able to do is be able to reproduce and do every single example from your notes and every single example from the homework without looking at any resources. The problem is most people don't really even finish the homework until right before the test, including myself. I was not one of those people that would have the homework finished two weeks early. I know people like that. I knew a guy like that once. It's just very inspirational to see people like that. The amount of discipline and the work ethic that it takes to do that is incredible. But that's what you want to try to be like. You want to try to be like those people. Those people who are magically on top of their game. They are never stressed and they, it seems like they have everything together and they're always, always completing everything on time and they're doing wonderful. Those are the people that you want to be like, except you want to be better. Right? Because if you try to be the best, if you try to get the top score in every class, you might not achieve it, but worst case scenario, you're probably going to do pretty well. And I say that because that was my experience. That was my personal experience. I always tried to be number one because I was very, very competitive. I was extremely competitive. I had to have the highest grade in every class. But I, not, I didn't always have it. I didn't always have it. In physics, our teacher would give a dollar bill. He would sign it. And everyone would clap, and he would give a dollar bill to the top score in the class. I took him for Physics 1 and Physics 2. Great man. He was, he was from India. Awesome. Awesome professor. He was so cool. I love that guy. And I would study outside his office hours every day. He said I burned a hole in the chair, which was kind of awkward. I remember hearing that comment and feeling a little embarrassed. But I studied so hard. On my first test, I got a 77, and he wrote, good job. I thought, 77, how is that a good job? All my friends got the dollar. All my friends got the top score. I never got the top score. In fact, I didn't even get an A in any of his classes. And I felt like I worked harder than everyone else. I, at least I, I thought that. I thought I did. But I got Bs, right? That was, was kind of like a worst case scenario. I studied like crazy. I felt dumb in that class. Looking back, I know what the problem was. I took calculus at the same time. I didn't really know any calculus. He was talking about integrals on the board. He talked about pulling out the constant. I'm like, pull out a what? What's a constant? What's an integral? What is that funny looking S? Like, I didn't know any calculus. 
and he was talking about calculus and physics. So I, I was just lost. It was, it was above my level of intellect. I couldn't solve equations. My algebra was weak. I, I just, it was too much. I was not ready for it. And sometimes that happens. So in situations like that, if you still try to be number one, like I did, I was horribly underprepared. I should not have been in the class. And I still got to be through pure effort, certainly not because I knew what I was doing, because I was completely lost. So that's why it's worth it. It's worth trying to get 100%. And, and the key is, again, make sure you can do everything cold, everything from your notes, everything from the homework. And if you have any kind of review, if you have any type of review for the test, go over everything. That's even more important than anything else. That, that the review is key. I remember one night, it was like 1.30 in the morning, and my friend was over and we were eating pizza, studying for a cryptography exam. We get an email from the teacher. This is the day before the test, 1.30 a.m. It's a list of topics and sample questions for the test. And my friend, he was a former teacher. He had taught high school for many years. And he looks at me. I'll never forget the look on his face. And he goes, that's the test. He's sending us the test, man. That's the test. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? He's like, dude, he's sending us the test. Because he knew he was a teacher. He knows how teachers think. So... The teacher must have woken up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, my class is going to fail this test. And so he felt bad, so he sent us a list of topics for the test you know, the night before. And it wasn't a hard subject. Cryptography is not that hard. It's just it was a graduate class. So our teacher insisted on covering the entire freaking book. We covered the entire cryptography book. We went through the whole book. We talked about everything. I mean, everything in the entire book. We were tested on all of it. But he tried to make it as easy as possible for us because he was covering so much material. So yeah, reviews. Go over everything. Try to get 100%. What do you think? Do you think it's worth trying to be the best? Because if you try to be the best, worst case scenario, you're probably going to do okay. Or do you think it's just worth trying to do well? I mean, I think it's better to aim high and then when you don't get there, it's okay. You just have to be okay with not achieving top status. Some people, they, they try to be the best, and when they fail, they fall hard. They, they fall really hard. I remember taking the uh, math GRE. That's a, that's, a, that's a test you take before you go to graduate school. And, and there was a girl, she was in my class, I didn't really know her, and she walked out of the test and she was crying. I mean, she was just crying. And I was gonna go up to her and say something, but I, I didn't really know her that well, so I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that alone. I mean, she was just in tears crying after this test. And I thought, wow, she's taking it really hard. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I thought. Like, wow. You know, I studied too. And, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember how I did, but it wasn't like amazing or anything. She had a 4.0. And so I think that she had already achieved perfection. She had never failed. Whereas I, I got my first B in college algebra, right? I, I tried to be the best in college algebra and I failed. I got a B. She had a 4.0. I didn't. So perhaps her standards were higher or she was trying to maintain her perfection where my perfection was destroyed very early on. That's why sometimes I think, you know, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, well, I never get hundreds, you, you might be in a better position than she was. You, you've, you've already learned to deal with failure. So when you have new failures, you're better at dealing with it. It's one of the things about failure. It sucks. But when you, when you encounter it and you deal with it and you overcome it, it makes you stronger. So yeah, if you have any advice for people, leave a comment. People read the comments. Oh, before I forget, if you want to learn mathematics, like college algebra or calculus or whatever, I have courses. Check out my website, mathsorcerer.com. And if you are not a subscriber, consider hitting subscribe today. Good luck. And try to get 100%. Worst case scenario, you'll probably do okay. Keep doing math.